Alright y'all, what's going on? Jay from JS Films. Now in this video right here, we're going to be talking about the MetaHuman Animator once again. This time around, I'm going to teach you how you can use the MetaHuman Animator using a tripod and an iPhone without a mocap helmet. I know some of y'all are asking how to do this. It's pretty similar, but just slightly a little bit different. So with that being said, I am going to record on my iPhone now. I'm using the iPhone 12 mini right now. So I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to have live link face because I'm going to show you the interface here real quick. Now I'm going to be turning it off when we're recording a take because I don't want it to jack it up. But basically all I'm doing right here is I'm just going to make sure that everything is good. I'm going to turn on preview depth right now. All right. This is the meta human animator. I selected it already in the beginning. Uh, I'm not using the live link. I'm shooting at 60 frames per second. So I'm going to press OK or done. But as far as framing goes, you would want your image to just kind of look all gray. If I get closer to it, you're going to see that it's going to get dark. This right here is too close. All right. So what you want to do is whenever you're doing this, just back up so until you see just all gray on your face, which is good. Your mouth is OK. You can, you can have black stuff in there it's because it's obviously going to be dark inside your hole. So that's pretty good. I'm going to go to the top left corner gear again and turn that off because, again, we don't need that. So what I'm going to do is record a calibration take, and then I'm going to record our actual take. All right, so I'm going to stop recording. Again, I don't want the frames per second to drop, so I will just adjust my phone right now just to make sure that it is Gucci right there is good. All right, so now we're going to record our calibration. So first things first, we're going to go look straight ahead and then left and then right. And then we're going to do the teeth calibration. Now it's always good to fix your eyes, you know, in front of you. So just pick an object that you're going to look straight into. Like for me, it's going to be my DSLR that's connected to my computer. So let's go ahead and do this take. I'm going to press record. Okay, that is our calibration take. Now, right now, there is a bug, I believe, in the app. Um, before you turn everything off, make sure that you do have your takes in there. So just double check. If you go to the bottom left corner, you can check your takes. Make sure you have your take in there before moving forward, okay? Because sometimes it wasn't recording my takes. So what we're going to do now is just record our take, whatever we need, performance that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to press record again. And it's always good to just kind of do a neutral post in the beginning. Okay, so now here we are in Unreal Engine 5.2, and I am recording on my iPhone as well, because now I'm going to show you how you can ingest your actual footage using the internet or Wi-Fi. Now, I usually like to transfer files because lightning cable is a lot faster, but, you know, just in case you want to use your Wi-Fi, you can use your IP address uh, whenever transferring files. Another reason why I like to do offline is whenever I'm recording on screen on a phone like this, I just want to zip everything up in one file and then upload it so I can download it to my computer. But let me go ahead and show you this real quick. So this folder right here is the tutorial that we worked on yesterday, which is kind of like the mocap helmet method. So what I'll do is I'll create a new folder right here. And I'm sorry, this camera is right in front of me, so it's going to be blocking my way here. So I'm going to do MHA2. And again, we're going to right click MetaHuman Animator, and we're going to create a capture source. This is going to be the Phone 12 Mini. I'm just going to name that and double click this. So in the capture source type, instead of selecting archives like we did yesterday, we're going to be trying out the live link face connection. And in the device address, you're going to go to your IP address on your phone. So what I'm going to do is on my phone, I'm going to go to the OSC server, and I'm going to type in my local IP right there, which is 192.168.1.16. Okay, remove the 5. All right, so 192.168.1.16, that's fine. I'm going to save that and then close it. Next, we're going to go back to our tools. Capture Manager, and pretty much everything else is going to be the same. You're going to see that we have iPhone 12 mini right here. And voila, you're going to see that we have the three takes that we just recorded right now. It's three takes because I screwed up one. So I'm going to say allow right here. And I can go ahead and minimize that. And so what I'll do is I'll highlight 11 and 13 because the 12 was a mess up. So I'm going to select 11. I'm going to select 13. 
and then I'm going to say add to quick way. Next, we'll click on import all. And that's now going to transfer the file. And you're going to see right here, it's going to say, and it's going to say file transfer in progress. Again, depending on how big your project is, it might be faster to transfer offline. But if you're just doing small stuff, you can always just transfer it via live link or whatever. Additionally, you can maybe get an Ethernet adapter so you can plug this in via Ethernet instead of using Wi Fi. But then again, my internet here is pretty fast. So, you know, this shouldn't be, this shouldn't take too long. Okay, so here we go, processing. All right, so both of them are ingested, so that's good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out because we are done with that process. All right, so I went ahead and just put my lights on my green screen so you can see this a little bit better. So we have our capture source here now, which is good to go. And what we'll do is we'll create a new identity here. So right click again, Meta Human Animator, and we'll click on Human Identity. And I'm gonna say JDog2, double click that. And in here, again, this is gonna load up your account it might let you sign in the next we'll go to create components from footage and i'm going to go to 11 because that's going to be my calibration take all right so here is our calibration take now i'm just gonna find a good neutral face stop moving donut okay here we go okay so that one's good i'm going to promote that now okay and then what i'll do is i'm going to click this right here and i'm going to select Whenever I look to the left, like so, look at that, that is great acting. I'll go ahead and promote that frame as well. And I'm gonna click this again, and then go to the right. Jeez, look at that. Woo, boy. All right, ladies, I'm taken, I'm just saying. All right, so here we go, that's good to go. And then what we'll do is click on the MetaHuman Identity Solve right here, and everything else pretty much stays the same. Then after that's done, I'm gonna go to Body, and I'm gonna select normal weight, choose whatever you want, and we're gonna say mesh to meta human. And you're gonna have two options here. You're gonna have skeletal mesh only. What this is gonna do is it's gonna generate a mesh for you. Or you can do a skeletal mesh plus full meta human, which what that's gonna do is create an actual meta human character of yourself, which is bananas, all right? So I'll click on this right now. And after that, what this is going to do is gonna send it to thousands of freelancers all over the world and they're going to create a 3d model of yourself and uh, that usually takes the whole process usually takes like i don't know three minutes or so it's pretty fast man the, the system they have is pretty insane i'm just joking it, it just does it magically i think all right here we go a meta human is also available in the creator we're going to go ahead and add our teeth calibration once again so i'm going to go to poses add add pose and teeth and once again, we're gonna go find my pearly whites. Bam! God! All right, and after that, I'll just say promote. Sure. And as long as the lip is good, this is, this is actually a lot better than before. Now again, this, these markers right here, it, it, this doesn't make sense because your, your lower ones are right here. So I'm just gonna put them in place. All right, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then we're gonna say fit teeth. And then we're going to say prepare for performance. Now, this, as far as I know right now, is the only thing that really takes time. So I'm going to pause this video and then come back in about eight minutes, and it should be done by then. Okay, so it's done processing, and again, it's the same exact way. So I'll just save it here and minimize it because we no longer need that. What we're going to do next is we're going to right-click the content browser once again, and then go to MetaHuman Animator, and we click on MetaHuman Performance. I'm going to name this JDog two take one all right so i'll double click this and again on the top right corner we're going to select our actual take now which is going to be 13. so you can see right here it's good to go and then for the meta human identity this is the one that we're going to be called jdog2 and that's going to load up the control rig i'll uncheck the advanced right here and for the head movement mode, me, I usually get my head movements for my body mocap. So I usually turn this off to just disabled because I want the head movement to be driven by the body motion capture that I have. 
And if I scroll down right here, we're gonna start seeing some more settings. Now I started playing around with this a little bit more. So what's interesting about this is I started looking at it a little bit more closer. You can actually skip the filtering here if you don't want to, because some of y'all actually said, hey, uh, the motion is a little bit too smooth. So if you wanna try and mess around with it, you can maybe check this box if you don't want it filtered or not. For now, I'm gonna leave everything by default. Now I might do a before and after as far as filtering goes. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, that being said, I'm just going to say process right here. And again, this is going to process your take for you live. Okay, so this is finished now. And I'm just going to say export this animation so we can check it out. I'll just save it here. And I'll lead, and then, uh, you know, as you can see right here, I have disable for the head movement, which is fine. I'll say create. And I'm going to open the sequence right here and play it back. I'm obviously reading a lot of people's comments and I'm seeing a lot of people complaining about the MetaHuman animator using an iPhone. As you all know, I like to play devil's advocate, right? I would rather buy a cheap iPhone 12 mini use right now online rather than having to hand animate this by hand. I think what people need to realize is, yes, we kind of are spoiled as far as technology goes, but buying an iPhone 12 mini is a small price to pay to get facial animations like this. I am an Android user, Google Pixel 6 with a cracked screen, but I did buy an iPhone 12 mini for Live Link Face. I guess I'm just I guess I'm just talking about this because it's it's really frustrating to see people complain about things without really realizing what they have. This facial animation that we just process in less than 30 minutes is 90%, 99% much better than the facial animation in the current games you're playing right now. I made this at home sitting on my desk in my boxers bro. We need to kind of like slap ourselves in the face and take a look at this and really appreciate this tool. And no, I did not get paid to say any of that. If, if you know me, you've been with me for a while. This tool right here is insane. If you haven't seen the rap test that I did, go check it out. I'll put the link in the comments below. For you to hand animate that performance versus buying an iPhone 12 mini, that's really all I gotta say about that. So enough with the rant, let's continue on with our tutorial. So what I'm going to do next is open up another Unreal Engine 5.2 project because I'm gonna show you how you can transfer this onto another project. Now I've gotten a lot of questions about, hey, can you go backwards to like 5.1? Unfortunately, as far as I know, you can't go backwards, only forwards. So if you have a 5.1 project, you're gonna have to upgrade that to 5.2, right? So you have to open up a copy, and I know it sucks. Trust me, I'm running out of storage. I have 70 gigs left right now as I make this video. I'm gonna minimize this real quick, and we're gonna look for that animation sequence. It's gonna be JDog 2 take 1. And I'm gonna simply right-click this, Asset Action, and Migrate. I'll say save selected for both. And next, I'm going to say OK. And in here, I'm going to go to the project that I'm going to be transferring it to. It's going to be lighting 5.2. And I'm just going to paste it right here. All right, so here is the project that we just migrated to. It's a mess, I know. So let's go to the MH2 folder right here. And now you're going to see this animation sequence. Now, I will double click this and you're going to get a message saying you don't have a skeleton for this, but that's fine. If you already have a meta human in our project, they all share the same skeleton. So just click next and type in arch and you're going to see the face archetype skeleton and press OK. Double click. And now you're going to see that our facial animation that we imported can now be used for all of the meta humans that I have, which is really, really good. And if you want to add that to the level sequence, just create one is fine. And let's grab a meta human here real quick. I'll just drag and drop Ichiro 
on the field right here, track him to the sequencer. And let's get closer. He's got his sunglasses on because it's super chill. And I'm going to delete the face control rig and the body control rig. Now type in dog. You're going to see that his face is now going to move. Now let's get rid of his sunglasses real quick. I know it's like sunny outside, but let's go with hidden end game. And I'll press G. Now it looks like crap because my texture streaming is over budget, but here is the facial animation that we got. And that's how you migrate it from one project to another. And obviously for me again, I would have a mocap in here that I could just drag and drop. And now I would have body and face mocap. So that's pretty much it for this video. I'm sorry this one went a little bit longer because I wanted to kind of go over a lot of things. But if you learned something new today, please do like and subscribe to the channel. I am trying to reach 100,000 subscribers right now. Additionally, if you want to purchase my mocap helmet, let me know. Email me at jsfilmsmocap at gmail.com. I am selling a mocap helmet iPhone holder like you've seen in my social media in my rap video. Uh, that being said, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.